A question that comes up a lot from technicians is this question of hard shutoff TXVs or non-bleed TXVs and whether or not you can pull through them during evacuation or during vacuum. Uh, and so this applies to both when the TXV is under vacuum or when it has no pressure in the system at all. So this image kind of shows it all in one place here. We've got the pressure from the bulb on top. We have the pressure from the external equalizer going underneath the diaphragm. The diaphragm drives a pin of some sort. And again, not all valves look exactly like this. This is just an example valve um, to kind of give you the idea. And you have the force of the bulb and the force of the external equalizer, and then the force of the spring, which assists the external equalizer in closing. But when you have no pressure in the system, you have no forces from the external equalizer, which makes the force of the bulb greater on top of the diaphragm. And so you can see here P1 force pressure above is greater, which forces the valve open. You do still have a spring force. And so there's going to be some force being pushed back, but the valve is still going to go to its maximum open position, especially when the system's off, because when the system's off, you're also going to have a warm suction line. So you're going to have high pressure in the bulb, and then you're going to have no pressure in the external equalizer, and that's what drives the valve open. All right, so we're going to show kind of all three positions here. First, under normal conditions, you have liquid refrigerant flowing into the valve, and then it's being metered. When you have a case where the system goes off and now the external equalizer pressure is greater than the ball pressure, then that valve can go completely closed. So that would be a hard shutoff position. But in cases where you have a greater bulb pressure than your external equalizer pressure, like cases where you're under vacuum or the system is off, in this case, the pressure above the diaphragm is greater because you have maximum bulb pressure, but you do not have the pressure in the system, in the suction line to work against it. So now that valve goes completely open, even if it's a hard shutoff valve, meaning it's a valve that's designed to go closed in the off cycle when the system has refrigerant in it, like in the case shown here. This matters because of the one hose setup. A lot of people get confused about the one hose vacuum setup like we're showing here in this fly through. When you connect to the suction line with the hose as shown here and your micron gauge or your vacuum gauge is connected to the liquid line, a lot of people will note that you're pulling through the expansion valve and they see that as a problem. But keep in mind, though there is some pressure drop across the expansion valve, and this is not the very fastest way of doing it, that valve is going to go wide open. And under most circumstances where you're only pulling on the line set in the evaporator coil, you're going to find this to be a very, very fast method of connection so long as you have your Schrader pulled on your suction line as shown here. So that's it. That is why a thermostatic expansion valve, a TXV or TEV or... TX valve, as some people call it. That's why it goes wide open when the system is under vacuum or has no refrigerant in it. You have a bulb force that's overcoming the absent external equalizer force. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.